morning, delegates and friends. Thanks for the kind surprise. I'm like, I, I didn't put together a video. <laughs> that could have been very interesting. <laughs> I know Jeff Smith has a sense of humor over here. <laughs> Thankfully, there's just me to start off things this morning with a question. Do you remember the original purpose of the name Cheesehead and where it got its start? It actually came from just a few miles down the road here. Uh, it was basically something that was uh, dreamt up by some fans of an inferior football team not far away. It was an insult. It was a, a very derisive term used to uh, basically be an attack on Packer fans. And yet, in our collective self-confidence and our own sense of humor, we grabbed that term we seized it, we made it our own, and we wear it proudly in Wisconsin. Well, well, so it goes with another insult, a more recent one. This one hoisted on us by fans of an inferior political philosophy. They used it as a term, as a derisive attack against those of us who stand with workers, whether they are organized or not. And what we have done is we have, with our collective self-confidence and sense of humor, seized it, we own it, we make it ours, and so it is that I say to each one of you, with great affection, hello, thugs. <laughs> See, today's right-wing Republican Party wants to characterize Democrats, progressives, and laborers as thugs, as slobs, as deadbeats, as freeloaders. I don't see that in this room. I see people who work, who work damn hard, or who did work hard and are now retired. And we're sick of having our work disrespected and undermined. And we are reasserting a fundamental truth about work and workers. The Democratic Party is the party of the American worker. The Democratic Party, the Democratic party is the party of labor, labor of all types. Labor that the middle class puts in every single day because it is the backbone of this country. And the people who labor day in and day out deserve our respect, our recognition, and they deserve rights because we all know there are no record corporate profits without labor. There is no success in the stock market without labor. There are no shareholder dividends. There are no CEO bonuses without labor. To the farm fields, from the smallest cubicles to the dirtiest pickup trucks, Americans are workers. And they will no longer have their work disrespected by a bunch of elites who want to take away our rights, lock the doors to the Capitol, hijack democracy, and tell us to just get over it. We will not get over it. colleagues in the Senate Democratic Caucus wouldn't just get over it. They woke up a nation to the threat against middle class labor and exposed the right wing's true anti-worker agenda. And they will restore Wisconsin's respect for labor when they are again in control of the legislature. <laughs> with your help and so, just as my old Senate colleagues are standing up against the extreme Republican overreach in Madison, 
It is time to do the same to the extreme Republican overreach in Washington, and it is why I am standing here before you this morning, running against Sean Duffy to represent you in Congress. <laughs> Wisconsin had a champion in the 7th District for almost 42 years in Dave Obey. He spent a lifetime fighting that conservative dogma that says that government should treat those at the top as if they are somehow better than the rest. More deserving of the fruits of our labors. More deserving of tax breaks, education, employment, success, and basic rights. And as he mentioned last night, we know that, that that kind of Ayn Rand ideology doesn't work, has never worked, is not American, is not moral, and does not move us forward. And yet, and yet, John Duffy, Paul Ryan, Scott Walker, and the rest keep wanting to move us backwards anyway. Backwards to the same discredited theory of trickle-down triple economics that says, our tax rates should be higher than the tax rates paid by companies and multimillionaires. I ask you, do you feel trickled on in a good way right now? Well, no. They want to go backwards to the same wrong idea that your health care can best be handled by bureaucrats at for-profit insurance companies. I ask you, has that ever worked? No. They want to go backwards to the same wrong idea that says the marketplace will police itself. And that the Wall Street banks that crashed our economy don't need someone watching to make sure that they don't do it again. I ask you, do you trust Sean Duffy's new friends to police themselves? No. no. There is no trust with this gang that sold voters on a bill of goods last November now that voters have seen their real intentions. They want to take away your rights and suppress your wages while you work, and now they want to take away your health care when you're done with work and want to retire, all the while enriching their big donor buddies who benefit as a result. Now they have shown that those priorities are not true Wisconsin priorities. The kinds of priorities we embrace, the kinds of priorities that prevented George W. Bush's recession from becoming an all-out depression, because we invest in jobs. We invest in training and education. We protect health care. We crack down on insurance abuses. We close corporate loopholes. All of these things are being undone right now. But I know that despite last November's setbacks, we have our priorities right. These priorities were set good and early for somebody like me. The oldest of four kids, raised by a single mom who had to wait tables overnight, in order to get off welfare while I watched after my younger siblings. I see a safety net that can help people lift themselves out of poverty. Sean Duffy's voting record treats the working poor like they're deadbeats, and that's wrong. I watched my little brother struggle with illness all of his short life. He died when he was nine. I was 14. I see how Medicaid is literally a lifeline. Sean Duffy's voting record John Duffy's voting record treats Medicaid as if struggling families with health issues are freeloaders. I broke our family cycle of poverty thanks to a college education that came with Pell Grants. Sean Duffy's voting record cuts financial aid as if hard-working students whose parents don't have a lot of money are somehow fat that you can trim from a budget. Education isn't fat. Education isn't waste. proud of my dad's lifetime of service to the United States Army, and I can't imagine what Sean Duffy was thinking when his party's budget slashed resources for homeless veterans, for veterans who need legal assistance. So in all of these areas, what I'm saying is, he can talk about deficits and spending and restraint and discipline all he wants, 
But as long as his cuts are hurting people on Main Street or Elm Street or First Street or Oak Street in order to benefit a select few on Wall Street, we know his priorities are not Wisconsin priorities and we can limit Duffy's damage to one term next year. some true Wisconsin priorities. This is one of the last speeches of the convention, so I'm hoping that you'll embrace some of these priorities as your own. Maybe consider them marching orders as we head out and talk to all of our friends, neighbors, and those independents that uh, Steve was talking about. Ten priorities to keep in mind. Number one, we will keep our promise to American workers. Medicare and Social Security will be there for you. You've earned it, and we keep our promises. We told them to be met, not ended. Protect and expand workers' rights to bargain together for wages and safe job sites and health care. Three, protect workers by fighting, by fighting against trade deals that would ship our jobs overseas. Four, four stop forcing the American worker to pay higher tax rates than multi-millionaires and corporations who often pay the effective tax rate of zero. Our tax code needs to be fixed so that it works for workers. It is not to be a grab bag of favors for the well-off. Five, when it comes to budgets, make sure our tax dollars are used on people who need it. People who work hard, people who study hard, people who can't work anymore, the sick and the vulnerable. Um, maybe people who are done with work and have earned their retirement, but stop with the giveaways to those who don't put our money to work for America or in America enough with the bridges to nowhere. Six. Six. New energies, especially domestic and renewable sources, create jobs. They make us less dependent on foreign oil. They increase national security. Stop coddling the oil companies already. Give our soldiers state-of-the-art tools, including the best long-range tool of all, a plan. And don't forget, don't forget, they and their families need us more than ever when they come home after serving our country. Eight, anyone who wants to study hard to get a first career or a new career should have the opportunity to afford schooling. As I said, education, innovation, and creativity are the seeds that grow tomorrow's economy. Nine, education is a gift to our children and grandchildren. So are school buildings and roads and bridges and sewer lines that don't crumble and high-speed rail lines. So get back to investing in today's jobs with tomorrow's infrastructure. Republicans have yet to introduce a bill that makes job creation a priority. Elect me to Congress, and we will get back to work, getting people back to work. And ten, declare that a state of war exists against the Citizens United Supreme Court decision, and never, never rest until are not people whose rights are greater than those of actual people. American elections are for Americans, not corporations who couldn't give a damn if our government stands with people or is against people. So help me bring this agenda to Washington, and we will restore a government of, by, and for the people, not just a few people, not just corporations, not just the Koch brothers. We will restore government for people. But I can't do this alone. I need you to join me because even though we have some great recall campaigns going on right now, 
The need to fire up the campaigns for 2012 will start immediately after that. So please go to CrichtonForCongress.com, find us and like us on Facebook, make a donation, tell a friend, remind people that Sean Duffy has already made lots of new friends among Wall Street banks, oil companies, health insurance companies, and of course the whole right-wing media empire. They know that he's made a lot of mistakes. As has been mentioned, a lot of families would love the challenge of having to scrape by on $174,000 a year. But despite all of that, we can't underestimate their determination to hold on to this seat. But we can take on this fight. We can reclaim what is ours. We can make Wisconsin proud again of who represents us in Washington. Someone who honors and respects the work of the families in this district and doesn't just talk about it. We can make this beautiful state a progressive beacon once more. It's going to be hard work, but we're not afraid of hard work. We like to labor in Wisconsin. And for thugs like us, this is a labor of love. Thank you. Someone who's been mentioned several